sites, projects, and so on. But regardless of what exactly we mean by this, by this 2.0 thing, we do know that there have been some quite rapid changes in how people around the world are able to communicate and access information and participate. Um, you know, we know that almost a third of the world has internet access now. We know about uh, uh, two thirds of the world has mobile phone access now. So we have to then ask how will these changes in connectivity, in access, and in theory uh, participation alter how development is both practiced and uh, conceptualized. What we're particularly interested in here today is um, uses of ICTs to foster uh, participation, openness, and the creation and sharing of user-generated content, information, and knowledge. Or more broadly, what we're asking here is will ICTs offer potentials for development to be become more inclusive and more open. So what we decided to do was construct this session in order to bring all of you together so that we can do three things here. First of all, what we want to do is have a critical discussion about the ways in which peer production or user-generated content or openness or whatever you want to call it um, alters the possibilities for development. Also, however you choose to interpret that word. Um, second, to form a network of people interested in this topic, and I'll, I'll explain how we'll do that in a second. And then third, to allow us all to contribute and uh, learn from each other, from each other's perspectives and experiences. So these are the four questions. I'll, I'll, I'll quickly read them out because I think it's probably quite hard to see them. So this is question one here. Um, and question one is, Almost 30% of the world's population has access to the internet and 68% can access a mobile phone. What does this mean to policies and practices of development? Is ICTD 2.0 an overreaching idea or are these shifts significant and powerful enough to warrant an entirely new model of development? Question two is what are some of the most and least successful cases of harnessing the power or wisdom of the crowd for development work and why? Question three up there is how can systematic, oh, sorry, I'm getting my questions mixed up. Um, you read what, the, I've the just read that one, didn't I? So that was question three. Question two is how can systematic uh, exclusions of people, ideas, voices from peer production and crowdsourcing of development practices um, be countered? How should these exclusions inform the ways in which economic, social, and political development is enacted? And then finally, we have question four, um, which is what is the role of online social networks or online communities of practice in ICTD 2.0? What are some examples of successful and failed networks and communities? Why did they or didn't they work? What does it take to make the available online tools useful in a development context? Um, so. Each one of us four will be sitting in on each of the four groups. Um, we'll be participating in discussion and taking notes, and in about 35 minutes we'll, we'll reconvene. Matt will explain exactly <coughs> what we're going to do in a second. Um, and so we have to self-select. So instead of taking a long time to think about each one of these, just go with your gut, right? Because you'll have plenty of time to think about them and discuss them um, in the, as we break up into groups. So the first thing is quick, intuitive, which one of these appeals to you most? Because that's what you're going to then be discussing for the next for the next 35 minutes. So what's closest to you? And then and then we need a process for um, breaking you guys into four groups of about 16. So so who? Let's just try it this way. Who intuitively is interested in question number one? All right. Why don't you guys come up and come on over here?
we, we had a give and, uh, give and take on that. We don't know yet. Um, so the four things we, we would say, our four responses would be, um, in no order. The, 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 there's definitely, um, we're at this moment of, in, of increased potential access and increased potentiality. And that has to be said and understood, and we, we need to kind of feel like there, there is something happening here. Um, and we think that um, if that's point one. Point two is that the, that the term 2.0 signals, on its good days, it signals that enthusiasm and that sense that we're moving in the right direction and that, that there's great things possibly happening. Um, on its not so good days, this is point three, um, the term itself, 2.0, ends up in, in its desire to kind of signal forward progress, ends up making more of a break than, than maybe be necessary versus than what's come before. And that, you know, the kind of one other people, there are people among us who, who felt that, that this kind of integer march um, devalued and, and almost distracted from what is much more sort of continuous body of, of research. Um, and the fourth one would be, wanting to flag that the, 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 the issues of, of power and, and unequal access and unequal skills in use, for example, have not been solved simply because there are more of these devices and more of these access points around. And I think that the theory needs to keep moving and practice needs to make that stuff really um, central and important if we're going to kind of solve those. Okay, thank you.